sure. You want to say? I okay. Said. Well, uh, I'm just going to use the same intro from. No, I'll do it again. Uh, good evening and welcome uh, to CU Immigration Forum here on WRFU LP Urbana 104.5 FM. Um, I will be your host for this evening. My name is Mr. Garza, and I am here to let you know that WRFU is an open forum for the Urbana Champaign community. The views expressed are those of the speakers and are not intended to represent WRFU, UC, IMC, or the Urbana Socialist Forum, or as we like to say on the uh, television version of this, UPTV. So uh, welcome to the show. We once again have the same guest we had last week. Uh, would you care to introduce yourself again to our I would love to. My name is Christina Valdez. I'm currently a senior at the University of Illinois, and I'm studying political science and communication. Very cool. And you are an intern at the Y, I understand. Yes. I'm the civic engagement intern. Civic engagement. What does that mean? Well, we like to promote um, civic engagement. So that means participating in the community, um, you know, voting. And basically what my job has to do with is um, really educating the community regarding immigration and citizenship. Ah. Um, and especially specifically with New Americans Initiative. Um, it's a partnership with the state of Illinois on mm -hmm. providing workshops and immigration services um, for newcomers and immigrants in the CU community. So this is just for students? Uh, no, it's for anyone in the <coughs> community who's either interested in becoming a citizen or a newcomer or a refugee or a permanent resident or whatever. Oh, so just anybody could walk into your office and say, hi, I want to become a citizen and you would tell them how? Yes, we can assist with that. Hmm. Do you get a lot of just random people or is it mostly through through the university somehow? Um, it's mostly people just in the CU community. We do have mm -hmm. a few people from uh, the university, but it's mostly people who have heard about us um, that are currently living in Champaign-Urbana and are interested in pursuing citizenship. Hmm. hmm. And what it, what it, the, 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 can't talk. What all is involved in uh, someone I'm only vaguely aware of what you have to do to become a citizen. I'm, I know there's like a test of some sort you have to take yeah. and all that stuff. Is it, I mean, could anybody do it or is it, do you really have to study for it? Or, I mean, how does this work? What is it like? Um, well, you have to first <clears throat> apply and you have to be mm -hmm. eligible to apply. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so you have to complete an application. Um, after <clears throat> that, you will have to take a test um, and it's sort of like an exam of, I, I think it's like 10 questions in English about like history it could be like, you know, how many people are there on the Supreme Court or like, you know, what's the Bill of Rights? Right. So, but that is in English. Um, so that can become difficult if oh. the person is not a native English speaker or does not have, you know, basic English um, in their vocabulary. So we try to assist with helping them practice for that. Um, after that, they'll have to go through an interview and then end up taking the oath um, of citizenship. So hmm. it's a whole long process. It can take sometimes up to a year, uh, but we provide free assistance wow. throughout the entire thing. Oh, that's really cool. So yes. you follow cases as they go along, right? Yes, yes, definitely. You keep like files on people and stuff? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if we do, <laughs> but I assume so. We have qualified immigration attorney attorneys uh -huh. there to like review applications and help us yeah. with the process just because we <coughs> ourselves cannot give legal advice. Oh, right. Um, so I'm sure they have files on people mm -hmm. um, regarding their status, et cetera. So you kind of get to know people over, over the period of them going through this process. Definitely, yeah. It must be really frustrating when somebody doesn't make it for some reason. Yeah, it definitely can be, especially because it's expensive. It's a few mm -hmm. hundred dollars uh, to even apply. Um, so let's say you don't pass, I think you, you have to resubmit the application again or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not the only thing we help with. We also help with like deferred action or um, parent and childhood arrivals. Mm -hmm. um, so that's nice as well. Um, that process is even more, I think, longer and, and takes a lot more documents than um, just regular old citizenship so well I I would say that I'm with the CU immigration forum obviously um, that we we tend to deal more with people who are outside of that sort of conveyor belt or, or whatever you want to call it for becoming citizens people who are, have just ran headfirst into the wall that is the immigration system and just failed to like 
make a dent in it. Is, are, is it how, from your perspective, how easy is it to do? Let's say I wanted to come here from wherever. How is it likely? Would you be sitting there going, "Well, I don't want to get your hopes up," but to you become know, a citizen, you yeah. mean? Um, it can be difficult, um, especially if you don't know resources. And there are people out there who are, you know, taking advantage of incoming immigrants just because they don't know, mm -hmm. you know, the ropes. And a lot of them don't have people to help them. Um, so that's what New Americans Initiative is, is just try to assist those people. Um, but it can be difficult if you don't know your way around. And there are, mm -hmm. in, you know... Uh, organizations, nonprofit organizations like Catholic Charities, for instance, that mm -hmm. assist with that application process. Um, but if you're not in a community that provides those resources, it can be tough. Um, from my person, I'm speaking from my own personal experience. Yeah. Um, my stepfather is um, American, so uh -huh. we had his assistance when me and my mom were trying to apply for citizenship, and you know had to go to the court dates and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of the times, you know. We have people who apply, and then sometimes they can't make the court date, or things get lost in the shuffle, and they don't have you know somebody keeping up with that. So it can be difficult for them. So it, it's a process that you know really depends on the person. Um, but services like this are there to help people. Are there quotas, like only so many people per year, or so many people from X country? I know there used to be. I don't know if they are now. I don't think there are anymore. Really? I think you just okay. have to be eligible. Um, what to become a citizen so I'm sitting here I'm asking you what would how how can I know if I'm eligible to become a citizen um, I think you have to have lived mm. in the country for at least five years how can I do that three to five I'm years <laughs> well you have to come here lawfully as a permanent resident um, so you have to like obtain a green card stay within the borders for I think about five years this is how it was when I was going through the process with my mom. You had to stay in for about five years as an alien, as the government likes mm -hmm. to call um, newcomers. Um, and then after that, you'll have to apply for citizenship, and I think that takes about three to six months. Um, then you get like approved, you go through the process, and then you can take your oath. And then I think a couple of years after that, or like a year or two, you get to get a passport. <laughs> wow. Is it hard to get a green card? Um, I would say so. I think you have to have a valid reason, technically, for coming into the borders, or um, you have to, you know, have somebody that's in your family already living here. So just because I felt like it isn't, <laughs> that's not a good reason. <laughs> the, no, the government would not say that, no. <laughs> well, I, I felt like coming here. <laughs> I saw this movie and it looked really cool, so I thought, yeah, I want to go there. I mean, wow. So it is pretty complicated. I mean, there's a lot to it. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I can see why a lot of people have a problem getting in and making that system work for them. It's it's very bureaucratic and it's expensive, as you say. Yeah. <clears throat> hmm. Well, I'm glad they have somebody. I just wonder how someone would even know that you existed to, to go to you for help. Like, yeah. how would they find you? Well, we try to broadcast um, our services mm -hmm. uh, throughout, you know, different areas in the community. So we just did some flyering about our current workshops a couple weeks ago at the libraries, at the Urbana Library and the Champaign Library. Um, you know, we have we put up flyers in, like, local grocery stores, specifically those that have ethnic foods, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. um, we are online. I think we had somebody contact us the other day that, like, found us through, like, some remote, like, blog <laughs> or something that had posted about us online. Yeah. Um, so that's nice that we have those outlets. We definitely want to get the word out more um, to know, let people know that we are immigrant-friendly and we are here to help. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that I've done a lot of uh, DACA workshops ever since that, program mm -hmm. came in, you know, and, and helping people fill out that paperwork and all that stuff. And the, th the consistent thing that I found is like, uh, as we were talking in last week's show, if you remember yes. that far back, uh, about how everybody's situation is different. And even though the form is not that complicated, like if you, you go through it, it's like, oh, okay, that's only a couple pages. And it's there, almost everybody has at least one question that's like, Okay, here's what they're asking me, but my answer doesn't really fit this question. What do I do? 
And it would seem like for citizenship, there's this whole other level of that mm -hmm. that would probably come into play that just makes it really complicated. Yeah, it can, it can be difficult, definitely. <clears throat> it really helps that we have attorneys mm -hmm. um, to be able to, you know, sort of get into those muddy mm -hmm. questions and figure out, you know, yeah. what people are supposed to answer. Because a lot of times we don't know, you know. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't Everybody's case is different. Yeah, I, I remember just sitting there going, uh... I'm gonna have to <laughs> get help here because I have no idea how to answer your question. I just I I can't even guess what the answer. Because a lot of, you know, a lot of the questions the answer is kind of logical. Like, mm -hmm. But what if X? And you go, well, okay, if X that this is asking about Y, so X doesn't. You know, you can kind of figure it out. But uh, there were a lot of things that are just like I have no idea. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you were saying something um, before before we went on the air about having gone to Washington. What was that all about? Yes, so this past week, um, I was in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. uh, with the National Advocacy Days through the YMCA. Ah, okay. So the YMCA has these three days where they have basically a conference, a summit, you could call it, um, from all of the leaders from the YMCA's. All of the leaders are invited from the YMCA's throughout the United States. Mm -hmm. um, and <coughs> we're able to go on Capitol Hill, advocate um, for emerging issues or bills that the Y you know, could really help um, could really garner some support from lawmakers mm -hmm. um, and really advocate for those and then we go through some workshops um, specifically my my workshops were regarding immigration um, you know what things we could implement in the community we had a lot of people from nonprofits come and speak to us um, talk about the work that they're doing um, and really just figuring out ways that we can better integrate newcomers into the community um, and help them you know in their experience so it was really cool uh, we met with um, people from the offices of Senator Mark Kirk um, and Congressman Rodney Davis so it was interesting to sort of like pitch our what we're doing and you know obtain <clears throat> some support from them uh, regarding immigration you obtained what from them? <laughs> Try, we tried to obtain oh, some support. Trying, I was going to say. <laughs> yes. Uh, was, they weren't actively <laughs> hostile, were they? No. It's just, you know, we were telling them about what we're doing in the community, how we're helping people. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times they just wanted more information. Um, so aside from that, you know, we, we were pitching a couple of bills that the Y specifically needs lawmakers to um, sponsor. So one is about background checks. The other one's about... Um, something about like the CDC and like health um, so we're also pushing for those but underneath we're like also immigration this is mm -hmm. what we're doing it's helping you know it'd be awesome if you could support it did they <laughs> well, <laughs> <say anything? laughs> uh, we we received a couple different reactions. One was really awesome and just like you know, get me some more info. Like, let me talk to the congressman about it. We didn't meet with the congressman specifically or the senator oh, specifically, yeah. just their aides. Mm -hmm. um, so one of them was like really like eager to learn more about what we were doing. The other one was just like, oh okay, cool, that's awesome for you. So yeah, I suppose they probably it varies. <laughs> They're good at, at sort of blowing people off without seeming like they're blowing people off. Yeah. <laughs> it's just such a, um, a polarized climate right Extremely. now in, in the government. And it it doesn't make sense to me. I don't understand. Well, I mean, I do understand from a, like a tactical, political, it, it's, it's very tactical. Mm -hmm. It doesn't probably have much to do with what most of these guys are thinking so much as what they think their constituents are thinking exactly um but even so it just it you would think that uh how can i put this i i like to be diplomatic about some of this stuff but you would think that a, a relatively decent human being would draw the line at going there yeah just in certain issues and this is one of those issues that i really don't understand how like good-hearted you know, people who think of themselves as good people can allow themselves to go all the way where their party is dragging them yeah. on this issue, which is pretty much like, I hate you, go away. <laughs> exactly. You know, that, that's, that's pretty cold if you think about it. I mean, they're not just voting against liberalizing the, the immigration rules. They're voting... These days, at least for a while now, they have been voting to get rid of everybody that's here yep. who has no documents. So they, they're they not coming out and saying it specifically. I want to deport 
10 million people, but their their votes are saying yeah. that. Yeah, actions speak louder than words yeah. in this case, definitely. And I would think, how do you do that? You know, I mean, how do you yeah. feel good about yourself at the end of the day when you do that? Or how do you talk yourself into doing that? I don't, I don't really understand it. Yeah. Sometimes it's just a little bit too much about re-election um, mm -hmm. and not enough about considering the issue at hand. Um, I think also because the debate is so polarizing, um, a lot of people just end up forgetting, you know, that at the end of the day, these are just human beings, you know, it's just people. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they need help. They're also contributing mm -hmm. to our economy. They're also, you know, here, not just to sit around, but, you know, to actually do something for themselves. And that's something that's oftentimes forgotten. Um, one, one of the facts that we, you know, explain to you know, one of these legislative aides we were meeting with is that, you know, after... Um, an immigrant comes and you know ends up achieving citizenship. Um, they end up in contributing more than six thousand dollars, six thousand dollars more to the economy um, than they have otherwise. So it's something you know that is really assisting the United States, but a lot of people don't see it in that way. So it's difficult. <laughs> yeah, I'm. It just it baffles me because. Uh, I think a lot of these people must simply just not know any immigrants at all. Like maybe they've dealt with them like, oh, you're my waiter at the restaurant that yeah. I go to or something like that. But they don't <laughs> actually know anybody because they, if they did, they would have to realize yeah. that the difference between the rhetoric and the reality is huge. There's exactly. a huge gap yeah. there that I don't understand unless it's the same way that, that people harbor like a lot of uh, racist kind of thinking where it's like, well, I hate those people. But I have a friend who's one, but you're <laughs> but different. different. You're yeah. not like them. You know, they're like this and this and this, but you're pretty nice. Yeah. It's like, how do you hold those, those conflicting ideas in your head at the same time? I don't understand it because if I like you and I think, well, you're a really good person, how can I at the same time think that people like you who, who look like you or whatever mm -hmm. are all bad? In some way, I, did, I just don't get it. Yeah, you know, I don't get where that comes into play. But then again, like we were talking earlier, at least you and I are similar in that we we actually go out of our way to meet new people. Yeah, right? people that have different kinds of uh, backgrounds and stuff. And I think a lot of people don't do that. I think they kind of avoid it because it's like, oh, I don't know, you're kind of different, so I'm just going to keep my distance from exactly, you. Exactly. Yeah. And hang around people that I'm familiar with. That that must be part of what's going on or yeah. something. I don't know. I would say that's probably a factor. And I think mm -hmm. also people just forget, you know, this was a country that was built on immigrants. And immigrants before us, you know, the Irish and the Italians, they had to go through a lot of the issues that we ourselves <coughs> are facing right now. Mm -hmm. um, but things are, you know, have definitely changed um, so I think that's something that's oftentimes forgotten and I think it, it's true what you said, you know, they just don't have enough exposure, um, mm -hmm. to those communities to end up realizing, you know, these people aren't here to, you know, bring war onto America, you know, they're just here trying to make a life for themselves. And a lot of times, you know, immigrants are from, you know, war torn countries or, you mm -hmm. know, places where, you know, good things aren't necessarily happening. Um, and most of the time they come here, they work their butts off, they, you know, really put it in and then, you know, they send money back home to help their families. So yeah. um, people just don't realize um, the human aspect of immigration. And it's more of just like politically, oh, I better not support it or else, I, you know, I'm not going to be in Washington for the next three or four years. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the other thing that they don't get, which I think is a, a common misconception, is that, yes, this is a country of immigrants, but the immigrants from the past, like you're parents, parents, you know, grandparents on, on up generation, they didn't have the same process of laws and, and rules and stuff to go through to come here. They just kind of came here. For a long time, you just came to Ellis Island. They'd kind of poke at you and tell you to cough and and <laughs> look at your eyeballs or, or whatever and say, okay, you look healthy. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. That was it. That was your immigration test right there. It's like, you know, are you, are you dying of some disease? You know, are you crazy? <laughs> are you, like deformed or something? Okay, then you're fine. That was how you got into the country. Mm -hmm. So it's not like um, all along there's been this set of rules and that everybody has followed that set of rules until suddenly now 
They're people not. are going, oh, no, screw the rules. We're going to just come here and, and do whatever we want. It, it has, it's nothing like that at all. It's, it's, they, as the rules have become stricter and more rules in place, more people, the same amounts of people are coming here, the same people with the same kinds of dreams are coming here, except now it's harder to get in. Exactly. And it's like a, it creates this bottleneck that not everybody can fit through. So some people are just like, okay, I can't wait. You know, I've, yeah. I've got a sick grandparent or I've got a kids and I've, I, they need to be in school or I need a job or whatever. And they just do it. It's the same exactly. people that used to be coming and going through and being poked and prodded. And, yeah. You know, uh, but just things have gotten harder. <clears throat> yeah. It's just harder for them to get in now. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I guess there's just lots of things people don't realize apparently <laughs> about this topic which that's what we're here for exactly you know, we're to educate them exactly so you said you were eight when you came here yes i was right? eight years old did you speak english i did not no did i did not english? speak a word of english hmm. when i came here how i guess at eight that's not a big impediment though you learn pretty quickly what did it take you about a year or something it actually just took me three months <laughs> yeah <laughs> i came here in april and um basically i spent the summer looking at flashcards with my mom uh -huh. you know reading the dictionary um watching a lot of dora the explorer uh -huh. as cliche yeah. as it sounds uh -huh. um and that's how i learned and you know it really helps when this is something I've noticed about learning foreign languages. It really helps when you're in that environment 24-7, and that's all you're hearing. I suppose it is. Um, yeah. Because it just absorbs into your brain much quicker, and you're sort of forced um, to put yourself in that situation and use it. And it's difficult as you get older because, you know, you get embarrassed, yes. and you're like, I don't, I don't want to speak. Like, I'm going to sound wrong. But when you're a kid, you know, it doesn't <coughs> matter. I, I was just, like, asking questions, like, you know, trying to figure out mm -hmm. everything. Um, so it by the, by the time August came around, I was starting fourth grade, and I... I already knew English, so. <laughs> I'm, I hate you. <laughs> That's all I'm I can sorry. Say. No, I've been, I've been <laughs> trying to teach myself, well, I've been trying to teach myself Spanish since I, I was telling you earlier that I was raised without that. Mm -hmm. And and so it seems to me at a minimum I should be able to speak Spanish. <laughs> so I've been trying for years and years to teach myself that. and. I've gotten to the point where I can understand what people are saying most of the time. Mm -hmm. So if I think about it, if I listen to a conversation, I'll go, oh, well, they're talking about going to dinner and the weather. And, you know, mm -hmm. I understand what's being said, but I cannot make my brain turn it around and, and put it back out. I can talk to you in English and you can talk to me in Spanish and I will have a fairly good idea of what you're saying mm -hmm. if you respond to what I'm saying, you know, if we had a conversation like that. But... I can't make yeah. myself say it, you know? I don't, it's like a roadblock in there somewhere. Yeah, it just gets difficult as you get older <clears throat> as well, just because your brain gets filled mm -hmm. up with so many other things. And so maybe like three <laughs> languages I'm trying to learn right now, and none of them are making a dent. What else are you trying to learn? Uh, Japanese, because I'm working with a uh, someone from Japan on a project, and so I'm trying to, I'm just trying to pick mm -hmm. it up because I think it's a really interesting language. And I'm also... Um, my ex and I are, are learning her language, which is Lakota, which is Native American oh, language. Cool. So she drafted me into it. It's like, well, you've got to work on this with me. And I'm like, oh, okay. good. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm trying to learn it because we go every summer to um, visit her family mm -hmm. together still. And uh, they all speak. And so I'd, I'd like to be able to, you know, I, I can kind of follow the vaguest general outlines <laughs> in that language but it's it's very difficult for me as well i can't can't speak it yeah it's frustrating i just feel like i'm never going to be able to speak a language i'll be able to understand them i just can't speak them it's just got to be everything that you put into your brain 24 7 listen to spanish music you know read things in spanish and as you progress you'll you'll be able to pick it up a little bit more <laughs> i hope so Maybe you should move, you know, somewhere Spanish speaking for a couple months. And <laughs> yeah, I, everybody tells me that. Like, oh, I'm going to take you to my grandma's house and just <laughs> make you just stay there. And no one's going to speak to you in English and you're just going to have to learn it. It's like, yeah. 
Yeah, when I have time, you know, <laughs> all that extra free time that I have. Pencil it into your schedule. Well, how many languages do you speak now? Uh, fluently, only English and Spanish, uh, but I speak a little bit of Swedish and a little bit of French. Swedish. Do I know any words in Swedish? Mm, no, I don't know a single word in Swedish. I should, though. No, I don't. Okay. Darn. I'll I'll teach you um a sentence in Swedish. Okay. Um say ja. Say ja. No, just ja. Ja. Ja tala. Ja tala. Lite. Lite. Svenska. Svenska. Ja tala lite svenska. Yeah. I bra. speak Swedish. Yeah, I speak a little Swedish. <laughs> speak a little Swedish. Yeah. <laughs> No entiendo muchas palabras. Okay. Svenska. <laughs> but I could tell from the form of it that it, what that was supposed to, yeah. to mean. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of languages are like that. that. That's, I think, what interests me about Japanese and, and Lakota both is that they're not anything that, like, if you, you know how, if you know Spanish or English, you kind of get the background of things like Italian and yeah, French and all Portuguese. these things. You sort of get the general sense of them. Mm -hmm. Lakota, no. <laughs> no. Not even close. Like, there's just nothing that you, <laughs> if, if I said something to you in Lakota, you'd just be like, it is complicated. And with that, uh, we have ended the second half hour of okay, our Okay, thank show. you so much. Uh, was there anything that you really would dine to say that you didn't get a chance to say? I felt like I no, not just really. blabbed about silly things the whole <laughs> it time. It was great. Okay. It was a great experience. Thank you. Well, I thank you for coming to the show. It's I really appreciated. I wish you the best of luck with your um, diplomatic stuff. I hope <laughs> thank someday you. to see you like in the news and like you're <laughs> signing treaties or something. Like, maybe <laughs> Thanks, you don't ever get Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. We'll see. <laughs> is this a is a path to becoming an ambassador someday? Uh, yes, you oh. can definitely become an ambassador by becoming a career member of the Foreign Service. So that would be cool. Wouldn't that it? would be really awesome. Okay. I think that and and probably a big political donation would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Both. My ultimate goal <laughs> would get you in there. Anyway, you have been listening to uh, CU Immigration here on WRFU LP and UPTV. I have to go back and forth here. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in and hope that you'll join us again next week. <laughs> I'm trying to talk and do things at the same time, and I'm not doing a very good job of either. Anyway, uh, tune in sometime. See us again sometime. Uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>